Welcome to this session where we want to, dis to discuss about autonomic pharmacology, what we call ANS in short. So we want to see the brief anatomy and physiology of autonomic nervous system in this session, whereby we shall look at the different structural differences and functional differences between the different branches of autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system, which we abbreviate as ANS, it is divided into two, that is parasympathetic nervous system. We have parasympathetic and sympathetic. which we abbreviate as sympathetic SNS and PNS. And some books also give enteric nervous system. So enteric nervous system is also part of autonomic enteric nervous system. So these are the different three branches of autonomic nervous system. But in our discussion, we are going to draw on these first two, whereby we shall be looking at the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and sympathetic nerve, nervous system. So the structural differences between autonomic nervous system is that under parasympathetic, the, 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 the nerve outflow or the supply is craniosacral cranio sacral supply, whereby it is supplied by cranio nerve 3, cranio nerve 7, cranio nerve 9, and the cranio nerve 10, which is this one is oculomotor nerve, this one is the facial nerve. We have grossopharyngeal and vagus nerve supplying the parasympathetic nervous system. Then the sacral, we have S1, we shall have S2. S4, supplying the bladder and the lower parts of the GIT. Whereas in a sympathetic nervous system, we see the nerve outflow or supply is by thoracolambo, thoracolamba. This one is thoracolamba, where it is supplied by T1 up to T12, then L1 up to L3. This is the nerve supply. And we normally see that this was the parasympathetic system is for rest and digest. So it is responsible for assimilation. Responsible for assimilation, whereas sympathetic. It is for emergency situations, what we normally call fight and fright. It is for fight and fright, which we call emergency situations. Another thing, according to the anatomy of the fibers, here are the craniosacral nerve fibers. If I can draw them, the nerve fibers, we see the preganglion being longer, the preganglion is longer compared to the postganglion. So if this is the preganglion and this is the postganglion nerve fiber, we see this one is long, then this one is short, which is opposite in sympathetic nervous system whereby in a sympathetic nervous system, the preganglion is short, whereas the postganglion is longer. So we are going, this is the preganglion, this is the postganglion, this is at the ganglia region. So we are seeing this one is short, this one is long. So this is according to the nerve fibers. 
Then according to the neurotransmitter, we're going to say that the neurotransmitter in the parasympathetic nervous system, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. That neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, both at the ganglia and at the effector, or at the nerve terminal. So the major one is acetylcholine. Whereas in the sympathetic, we are going to see at the preganglion it is acetylcholine, then at the effector is the major one is norepinephrine. So here the neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. Whereas here it is acetylcholine. So these are the structural differences we can discuss on this parasympathetic and sympathetic. Then lastly, we can talk about receptors. Difference in receptors, whereby for parasympathetic nervous system, they have mascarinic, which range from M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5. Then, not forgetting the nicotinic receptors. It has also nicotinic neuronal and nicotinic masitura, whereby M1 is majorly found in the CNS and smooth muscles, whereas M2 is found majorly in the heart, that is cardiac. Then we find M3 distributed widely in smooth muscle tissues like the GIT, like the lungs, that is the bronchus, like the, the urinary bladder. So it is widely distributed. The eye, we have there M3. M4 is CNS, and also M5 is the central nervous system. So M3 is the one that is widely distributed in the eyes, in the mouth, we, in the, that is the part of the GIT, in the urinary bladder, in the bronchus, and blood vessels. That is M3. M1, central nervous system, or the, in the nerves, and smooth muscles. Then nicotinic neuronal is found at the ganglia of, of both nerve fibers. The last nicotinic masitura is found at the neuromasitura junction, whereby the neurons meet skeletal muscles. So these are the different receptors, and we shall tell you that M1 M1 is G, G2, M3 is G2, and M5 is G protein 2. Whereas M2 and M4, which are even numbers, they are G inhibitor. If you can remember about the G coupled receptors, we're going to see that G2 acts by increasing IP3 and DAG. So we shall see. Stimulation is via M1, M3, and M5. Those are all the numbers. They act by increasing IP3. So M1, M3, and 5, which are all the numbers, act by increasing IP3. That is inostal 145 triphosphate and DAG. They increase also diacylglycine. So that is M1, M3 three and M5. Whereas M2 and M4, which are even, we are going to see M2 and M4, for them they are G inhibitory, meaning they act by decreasing camp levels. They act by increasing, decreasing cyclic AMP, hence inhibiting the stimulation of those cells supplied by these receptors. That is according to parasympathetic nervous system. Then according to sympathetic, the receptors within the sympathetic nervous system, we shall talk of alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. This beta 3 is majorly found in adipose, whereas beta 2 is distributed in different tissues like GIT, in the eyes, in the bladder, 
The inhibitor one is majorly found in the cardiac, that is heart muscles. RAS alpha 2 is found in the preganglia. It is inhibitory, so it is found in the preganglia. Preganglion. Preganglion of nerves. And it acts as a brake, or it inhibits release of norepinephrine. Whereas alpha 1 is also distributed widely in the, in the bronchus. You can find it there in smooth muscles, majorly different smooth muscles. That is GIT. You can find it in the bladder. You can find it in the eyes. So this one we find it even in the prostate. So glands also have alpha 1. That is what we can discuss about receptors and the sympathetic nervous system. And we're going to see that all these functions are brought about by these neurotransmitters, that is acetylcholine and norepinephrine, binding to these receptors, bringing about different stimulations. That's why we're going to see different functions whenever these receptors are stimulated by these different autonomic nervous system. And to begin with, that's what is going to give us functional differences. And among the functional differences between parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system, we are going to see that for parasympathetic, which we have said it is for rest and digest, we are going to see that only the heart is the one which is stimulated. So we're going to see if we, the, the surprise to the heart, it is, it is inhibited. It is the one, it is the only one which is inhibited, meaning it will cause what we call decrease in heart rate and decrease in contractility and conduction. Whereas in sympathetic, it is the opposite. It is stimulated. And after being stimulated, meaning there is increase in heart rate and increase in the conduction and the contractility of the heart muscles. So the effect of parasympathetic nerve system on the heart is this one who can result into bradycardia, this one who can result into tachycardia. Because this is for emergency situations, so you need the heart to pump faster to supply blood so that you can take off. Then another is whenever it is supplied to the lungs by the bronchus. So we're going to see others it is stimulated. So we're going to see others is stimulates. And when it stimulates the bronchus, it leads to what we call bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction. And whenever it inhibits this one, it brings about bronchodilation. Then when it goes to the GIT, it is going to increase GIT motility and GIT secretion. So, so it here it stimulates and increases GIT motility and secretion is like hydrochloric acid. And this one is the opposite. For it, it decreases GIT motility and decreases secretions of the GIT. So that is what we can discuss under that. And when there is supply to the bladder, that is urinary bladder, we are going to see that it is going to cause what we call, the, the, these receptors are always found in the detrusor muscles. So whenever it is supplied by the parasympathetic, it causes contractions of the detrusor muscles. Contractions increasing urination or what we call micturation. This one increases urination, whereas this one, it inhibits urination by relaxation of the detrusor muscles. This one inhibits urination. Then the pupil, that is the eye, remember you are at rest and you are not active, so you don't need to open much the eyes. So there is narrowing of the pupil, of the eye. 
And this condition is what we call meiosis. This one leads to meiosis, which is narrowing of the QP because you are at rest. But remember when you are in emergency situation, you are taking off from a lion. You need to open the eyes widely so that you can see where you are going at a distance. And this one is what we call midriasis. Midriasis. That is widening of the QP. So these ones bring about meiosis actions. This one bring about midriatic actions. Then lastly is the glands. And whenever glands are supplied with the parasympathetic, remember you are assimilated at rest and digest. So there is increase in secretions. So this one increases increase in secretions from glands. If it is from the salivary gland, it increases secretion of saliva. If it is the lacrimal glands in the eye, it increases production of tears, but what we call lacrimation. So here we are seeing there is salivation. We shall see salivation. We shall see lacrimation. We shall even see sweating, production of sweat, increasing secretions in the glands. Each gland, even the GIT, we see increased secretions. Whereas whenever it goes to sympathetic, which is for emergency situations, when you are being chased by a lion, a fearless lion, you cannot say, let me first go and urinate, then I run. So this one decreases secretions from the glands. Its actions decrease secretions. And that's why we normally say the mnemonic and uh, parasympathetic nervous system is always dumbbells. It's always dumbbells. Dumbbells. Whereby D is always uh, showing, it is indicating diarrhea or defecation, meaning whenever you are at rest, that's when you can feel you want to go for a wrong call. Then U, U is for urination or micturition. Then M is for meiosis, that is at the eye. Then B is for bronchoconstriction, that is in the lungs. E is for emesis, meaning there is vomiting, that is increase in the GIT motility. The last arrow is for lacrimation, and the SC is for salivation, meaning increase in secretions. Whereas the opposite is true for sympathetic. For it, it inhibits urination, inhibits secretions, causes midriasis that is widening, it causes increase in, decrease in the GIT motility, it causes bronchodilation and tumation. But this one inhibits secretions except the sweat, except the sweat glands. This one is exception of the sweat glands. So this is what we can discuss in this introduction, autonomic nervous system. Thank you for watching until the end. Hope you have gained something from this introduction. So next video, we shall start looking at parasympathetic, which drugs we use to stimulate and which drugs we can use to inhibit. And then we shall go to sympathetic, sympathetic whereby we shall also see the different drugs used both to inhibit and stimulate. Thank you so much.